Okay. All right. Um, welcome to uh, DevOps for Masses. Uh, just by way of introduction and an explanation, I have been officially in the DevOps role at Tagman for approximately uh, four months. So hopefully it's enough time to give you at least a little feel for... Is that better? Okay, that's better. That's much better. Enough time to get at least a feel for the tools and the techniques that, we're, that we now use in the so-called modern era. I, I just... <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah. I recently moved from uh, Tagman to Moonfruit and hopefully someone may be here. Um, let's start off with this. We're talking about we're trying to define what DevOps is, which is in itself rather not so much hard as annoying because I have so far been to, let's see here, the DevOps days in London. I have done the required reading, which I'll get to in a second, which is actually really dull. Um, and the required YouTube watching of videos, sitting around and watching hours of presentations on essentially uh, Puppet and Chef and how much developers suck, <laughs> which, is, which is the real, really fun part of this whole adventure. Um, and from what I have been managed to, from what I have managed to gather, um, it's not so much um, dev ops as it is ops trying to get dev to behave. <laughs> in the yeah, at um, dev ops days in London, the theme there was bridging the gap between development and operations. And oddly enough, 99% of the crowd there was operations staff that were complaining about uh, schemas, complaining about how we as developers uh, never actually managed to properly release software, never managed to do things on time, um, and not work properly with the tools that they have always set up. So it, a, a lot of complaining <laughs> and not much actual uh, progress in a way of bridging the gap between the two worlds. Um, well, my timer stopped. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, just for background, the so-called seminal work uh, for DevOps is by um, Jean Kim, uh, Eugene Spafford, and uh, one of the person I can't. I can't actually uh, remember the name of uh, the Phoenix Project, which is an extraordinarily dry and dull novel, um, at, at, at least from my reading. If anyone out there uh, wants to challenge the Amazon reviews that he's been getting, feel free. I'm sure we can debate. It feels like a damn brown novel, except with a lot of several less plot. Um, but anyway, it is so-called so, so the assembly work. Uh, talking about, again, the DevOps bridge. And oddly enough, there's only one developer character in the entire novel. So again, reinforcing the fact that it really is not so much about development as, as not so much about ops working with dev as ops bringing dev to heal. <laughs> so I, I, I may be just touch cynical about this, so I, I apologize for my I apologize for the overall bearing. Um, the other work is also by Gene Kim, The Visible Ops Handbook, which I have not read. Um, what I would choose to define DevOps as is a combination of virtual machines working in a cloud, working in either a cloud or a local cloud or a local cluster. Uh, the automation tools that work with the virtual machines, and finally integrating the um, machines with the with the overall um, with the overall um, operation systems. Um, virtualization, uh, what this gives us, um, 
the main benefit that this gives us uh, for developers is the the big you no longer theoretically have excuses for well it worked on my machine because with a virtual machine you have no if you have everything is set properly, it's a one button deploy to create a virtual machine that is a exact one-to-one -one replica of what's in production. So you no longer have the excuse of being able to say, well, you worked on my machine, it doesn't work production, what's wrong? Because you have the same set. Again, theoretically, we all know there, we all know we're in the real world, so there's configuration file issues, or maybe networking issues, but the code will be solved, and the code should be one-to-one -one between your machine, QA, if you have QA nowadays, that's what I'm going to pass a from what I've seen, and uh, production. Yeah, at least companies like uh, Booking and um, my last haunts at Tagman, I'm not sure how Moon Fruit works yet in terms of QA, but that seems to be going in the way of letting the users do your QA, or being more respected. Uh, I'll see. Yeah. The virtualization platforms that we're currently using are Zen and Kimu. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's just a way to build within your local machine a cluster of smaller virtual machines. Uh, we're going to talk later about how they integrate with our roles. Or, I'm sorry, how they integrate with the new tools Puppet and Chef. And what that you know, what that does is lets us create machines based on, say, a database class, or create a machine based on a master web server. So you can deploy one, so you can deploy with one button. Again, theoretically, it actually works out to two command line instructions to deploy a uh, to deploy. Mm, sorry deploy, I say, a full database cluster and be able to replicate that repeatedly and install that on your machine so you can take that home and do your development work on that or work on that at work and we can come back have a one-to-one -one copy of what is on the new production machine. Um, you can, if you are in so inclined, you can store this your virtual machines on Amazon EC2, um, Rackspace has their own um, providers for hypervisors and such. There's also LineNode, at least more popular in the US. So that, that's where you can store your virtual machines that you're creating. And how you manage the overall clustering is with, is with um, OpenStack or Vagrant or VMware. I'm most familiar right now with OpenStack uh, that uses the Nova client and has GPG signing of your machines. So you take OpenStack and want to create a new VM based on, say, a Puppet or a Chef clone. So it's one Nova, Nova deploy dash dash class database, Nova deploy dash dash class web server. So you deploy your, so you have all your the entire web server class there deploy as one machine. So again, you have a one-to-one -one replication. So what is in production is on your machine. So there's no longer, so configuration issues are hopefully all that's left between what we have between two machines. Um, Again, I have most experience with OpenStack. Um, Vagrant, I believe, is a hypervisor as well. VMware has the role. Um, my uh, co my uh, co operations people at Vit at um, Tagman preferred Vagrant, but we went to OpenStack because of our management time. I'm not certain of the differences and didn't have enough time to really get into. In, into the work. So um, again, as I was saying, uh, we have um, we have uh, one server, um, one to one replication of the environment that that you're working with, and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail as to how you do the replication 
as to how you do the overall setup. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Code bases. I'm going to, I'm going to run out of time here, so we'll have plenty of time for questions um, at the end. Um, the code base, again, is replicated directly from the server onto your, uh, onto your cloud machine. So that's, again, repeatability and cut down on the sources of errors and all of the, all the translation changes that happen between your machine and what's out in production because it's all the same mechanism in the end. You have your own, you have your own open stack uses that you push to a production machine or that you push to your development machine. It's all the same box, it's all the same operation. So whatever you do in on your machine is the same no matter where it goes to QA, whether it goes to production, whether it goes to your local development machine or even to a uh, GitHub into you know, just a local um, Git cluster. So again, repeatability, and that helps cut down on sources of overall errors. Um, and again, configuration files, those, um, these days, those are more maintained by the new tools that, that we work with in the DevOps review. And these are, a little bit different than your average uh, programming task. Your typical programming task is very much an algorithmic process. One step follows the next, follows the next, maybe it's a loose, maybe it's branching. Uh, tools like Puppet, tools like Chef, those are more along the lines of a declarative setup. You declare at, at whatever point that a, that say for a web server class, that you have a user local Apache on, on that box. You declare that you have a user local Apache or SE, SE Apache configuration file within that. So it's not as much how we think of as algorithmic one by one. It's more declaring how the machine looks. Um, I don't have examples for um, the files in Fortune because my laptop decided not to uh, connect this morning with a Wi-Fi chip, but, um, but that, that's, that's the main difference there. Uh, it is more of <laughs> describing how the machine is laid out and how things should be in place, rather than saying, you do this, you do that, you do that. So you can still go on to, you can still log on to your machine, do whatever you need to do, and then rerun the public step tool, and it will reset everything to you, you go in, change um, a single patch configuration, you go in and change your code base, and at the end of the day, you rerun the public tool and it will, re, it will reset what it knows about on the machine. So you will have your, so you will have your spare files lying around in temp, that will still be accessible, but the code will, the code and the overall OS will return to where it was before to work with it. So again, repeatability, consistency, and it's one command line to do all of the work. Um, Chef, and, well, Chef and Papa, rough, um, this is Chef terminology. I've used that mostly. We start out with Puppet on OpenStack, but we're currently working with, um, we're Chef, uh, five, is five, six? Out of time. Um, chef, run, chef runs with the analogy of recipes and cookbooks and rolls. Um, rolls would be a database machine, would be this is to deploy a database machine, or this deploys an Apache cluster, or this deploys your master caching system. Within that, there are cookbooks that tell you how to deploy a Database that tell you how to deploy Apache, and within those are recipes that say what files are needed for Apache, what files are needed for a database cluster, and those you can you can run the recipes individually with I believe the command is knife prod command 
knife fraud, rest, knife fraud um, recipe, I, I forget. It, it, it's been a while, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but but I, again, um, that is how, um, again, in the DevOps realm, you fire up machines, how you declare, declare systems, and again, the idea being that it is repeatable from time to time, and you can create a base, you know, Arch Linux or a base Arch Linux or Ubuntu or Debian Precise, and overlay all of your source onto that in one step, repeat, repeatedly, and re return the um, expected results time and again, as opposed to having to guess as to what version you're on, having to guess as to what, what system is running, et cetera. Um, the, the, la the very last bit, and I'll run through this one and answer questions if there are any. Um, the, the last bit, of course, and I, I wanted to find a picture of the monitoring baby, angry baby, but again, network failure. Um, Jenkins is the current um, best practices tool for continuous integration. Uh, Nagios is current, as far as I know, and opinions, of course, differ widely on the best practices for monitoring. Uh, speaking of all of these, there we go. Excellent. Um, and graphite is one of the various tools that you can use uh, for taking your Nagios fees for monitoring and, mon and displaying those in shiny graphs for your for the um, managers and watch for spikes and monitor your throughput. Um, that, that's, that's the other end of that. And for, at least for us, uh, what it turns out to be, as far as I've been able to synthesize, and coming up on time now, um, is basically the idea is that you wrote your code, you are now supporting that through production and you know, I got the blinds, blind mic there. Um, thank you. Um, so if you write that code, uh, you will also, as part of your DevOps task, you will also be able to create the roles for that piece. Say you have a web server, you create your own web server roles that go in and insert the files and run the RP, install the RPMs. So you are responsible for that as well. And at, you're also responsible for going into your Git repository and adding in the Nagios tracking, adding in the graphite monitoring as part of that. And at the end, you get the pager for a few weeks when your project goes into production, as opposed to the more traditional waterfall type approach or even the more traditional agile type approach where that's all done by ops. So you are now essentially on the chain as well. And if you do a, if you do a good job up front, then you're not going to get alert. And when you do get alerts, then you will be able to fix them a lot quicker than someone, than someone in operations. Thank you. And I'm now down to one minute, so um, I will uh, take questions. If, if there are any. Okay, I do. Oh, uh, sorry? Jenkins and uh, DevOps uh, to uh, deliver PEL software. So we use uh, functional tests, uh, we use unit tests. Uh, what your common best practices in doing all? Okay. Uh, 
Um, all right, that's about uh, what we do for practices for uh -huh. for timing. No, that's my timer size. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you, Android. Yes, yes, time is yes, time is up. Um, best, the best practices that we've come out with so far, unfortunately, have not. Um, the, the best practices that we've come up, up with so far uh, have actually been um, essentially corpus testing of our software. So we haven't had a chance to uh, build up uh, proper unit testing, but you can run that through Jenkins, um, and that is relatively easy to set up. Um, at, at least from what I found, uh, Jenkins allows you to use JUnit or Tab to set up what you have, and at the end, <laughs> then you have on the Jenkins dashboard you have either a green light to push finally to production, or you have red or orange to decide what to do. Anything else? Okay, looks like we have time now. Thank you very much.